Excited about the possibilities of artificial intelligence, we aim to build the smartest possible programs that serve us. But what if this approach actually was the opposite of what we should aim for? Instead of building the smartest AI possible, what if we aimed to build a set of AI components that were the minimum of cleverness necessary for a given task and become an infrastructure component on which other AI systems would be then built. When many decades ago the protocols for the internet were designed, the TCP IP set of standards, the architects of that uh, design were able to uh, realize that it would have been impossible to predict the type of applications that in the future would be built on top of those protocols, using those protocols. And as a consequence, they didn't try to forecast the type of applications that would emerge and the type of features that these applications would need. What they did instead is to agree on the minimum set of protocol components that would be able to support the richest set of applications, whatever creative developers came up with in the future. And this approach has been transformative because they assumed that the network would be dumb. The network wouldn't know, wouldn't care. You could connect two points, you could transmit packets, and whatever those two points were, whatever the content of the packets were, the network didn't care, the protocols didn't care. Now, many decades later, the internet is everywhere and it did indeed uh, transform the world and lived up to uh, even the wildest uh, dreams and expectations of uh, its uh, architects, its developers and its users. Today, we are building a new generation of tools that take um, for granted very powerful processing power uh, increasingly available not only in data centers with dedicated specialized hardware but in our uh, edge devices as well uh, in the smartphones but also in the nodes of the Internet of Things uh, components that don't interact directly with humans uh, they have sensors, they have actuators, they communicate with each other, they compute, they memorize, they know more and more about the world, uh, but the value that they provide in the network is to us other uh, network components they never talk directly to, to humans. The amount of data that uh, both humans are generating uh, in this uh, new infrastructure layer as well as uh, the machine components, the nodes of the Internet of Things generate uh, is enormous. And this is where the third component of this new infrastructure comes into play. Algorithms that are able to recognize patterns to uh, obtain knowledge uh, from uh, the raw data uh, that encompasses uh, the world. So we are now using all kinds of new types of terminologies to uh, talk about these approaches and these infrastructures. Internet of Things is one of them, Industry 4.0, uh, Digital Twins, uh, Smart Cities, and Almost all of these approaches suffer from the assumption that the algorithms 
should be the smartest possible, pushing their capabilities ever further. And in this way, making new implicit assumptions that go in what is called the application layer of what kind of applications should be enabled by these algorithms uh, that run on these smart and powerful processors uh, using the large amount of data that uh, we have collected and we are collecting. But these assumptions are necessarily wrong. Even if they get a few of the applications right, the probability that there will be a thousand uh, more that are not anticipated, or even worse, some essential applications that are incompatible with the uh, capabilities of the infrastructure is almost a certainty. What we should instead aim for is analyzing and understanding what is the minimum set of smartness, what is the minimum set of AI pattern recognition that should be taken for granted, should be universally available, regardless of what kind of data we are talking about, regardless of what kind of processor it is running on top. A new TCP IP for artificial intelligence. And then we can be sure that uh, eager, creative and talented developers worldwide are going to be taking advantage of this new infrastructure in order to create all kinds of astounding applications for the decades to come. Do you want to live in a smart city where the definition of smart uh, is by the architects and designers of the city from 10 years ago, rather than you having the ability of adopting whatever definition of smart uh, is serving your interests best in that given moment. Well, it is evident that the second approach is superior and that it gives rise to much more adaptable, much more resilient uh, infrastructure uh, that uh, welcomes a new kind of urban living supported by the AI infrastructure that we are making available. Similarly to the smart grid, uh, the new energy uh, system that uh, we are rapidly building that takes into account how um, solar energy, wind and batteries work together uh, in order to deliver not only uh, a performance uh, on par with what uh, we used to use uh, in our electric grid, uh, but uh, new uh, possibilities as well. Again, uh, this smart grid should not assume what are the uses, what are the needs uh, going into the future forever. It should instead provide the minimum necessary conditions so that those applications can be built on top with uniform assumptions that do not depend in this case, uh, from the source of energy, from the type of transport of the energy, and so on. And I could keep going. Uh, wherever you meet uh, the inclusion of AI, smart, and other uh, similar uh, synonymous words in um, trying to communicate the value of some kind of technology development, you can and you should ask yourself if uh, the designers are taking one or the other of these approaches, aiming for um, maximum reach, uh, covering uh, unanticipated needs uh, in an impossible quest uh, to uh, embrace all that is possible, or in a disciplined manner, 
achieving the hard task of working out what is the minimum set of support services that the AI layer should provide uniformly to everyone. And when you do that, and you recognize that the second approach is uh, what is being analyzed and implemented, I believe that you will see the winning team, the winning approach, and well, uh, in a few years or in a few decades, we will see uh, flourishing the new AI applications, similarly to how the internet was able to flourish thanks to the same approach starting many decades ago. Thank you for uh, following this episode of The Context. If you like it, you are welcome uh, to become a fan, a sponsor, a benefactor uh, on Patreon at patreon.com slash David Orban.